Welcome to the Pipes and Tobacco Talk podcast, where the discussion promises to be sort of interesting, the humor offensive, the tobacco's pretty darn good, all the pipes well above average. We're your hosts, Tim Beaumont from Papa Bear's Pipes, and I'm Jim Steffi from Emerson Southern Forged. This is episode three. How are you, Tim? Good, Jim. How are you? I'm excellent, thanks. It's uh, good. it's Sunday night in Colorado, and you and I are chatting. Yeah. Doesn't get better than that. No, no, well, it doesn't. Well, it could, but could. You know. <laughs> when you got nothing, this is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So it's been a hectic day. Um, I'm in the Pipes, Pores, Pals, and Pigskin ESPN Fantasy Football League, and we had a draft today, so I got to smack talk with all the fellows in that, and that was enjoyable. And and Stacy from. Um, and I'm going to butcher this Marine bespoke works. She does the leather crafting, uh, just an yeah. extremely talented artist. Okay. And I didn't know that she's from Canada. So there you go. So what's, what's new in your world, Mr. Beaumont? I uh, just, uh, recovering from all the heavy rain over the last week and, uh, finally had a, a sunny day yesterday and today, um, spent, uh, an enjoyable afternoon yesterday and, uh, the great metropolis of Hubbard, Ohio, at uh, the Cigaro uh, Cigar Lounge. Uh, Dan Reese and I from Ohio Briar put on a little soiree there with uh, and showed off some Emerson Forge tobaccos. And the guys enjoyed it. We had, you know, Very nice. a few hours of uh, enjoyable conversation. And um, yeah, it was it was a nice afternoon. So that was oh, good. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, how far is Hubbard from where you're at? About 20 minutes. Very close. Okay. So, it's not a jaunt. It's no, relatively no. It was for Dan. It was, uh, he's just, uh, he's east of Columbus. So, that was a two and a half to three hour drive for him. Quite a commitment. Ooh. Well, yeah. kudos thank to you, Dan. Dan. Good we guy. We really appreciate you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's he a is. good guy. And and every time I go to his website because I want to get another Ohio Briar, everything is sold. So he uh, must be doing something right. Yeah, he's uh, he Hoping does. Hoping he's nice got job. some left from the show and he can put them up. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. All right. Well, as always in pipe and tobacco talk, we have the what's new segment. Then we'll talk about pipes and we'll talk about tobacco and then we'll take your questions. So, Tim, what's new in? Your collection. What what did you pick up this week? If you picked anything up, let's chat about it. Um, you know, I I really didn't buy anything this week. Um, I've been uh, working on commission pieces uh, since the show. I've gotten a lot of requests for for commissions. Seems like a, to be a pattern. Folks come and you know they they peruse the uh, the pile on the table and then decide that. You know, what uh, is on the table is nice, but if it only had this, that, or the next thing, it would be great. And uh, so there's just, as an example, one that uh, will go out tomorrow that I just finished today is a, uh, a nice uh, lumberman. Oh, gorgeous. Oval shank, you know. Um, mm -hmm. This uh, gentleman won his first birthday, so he, he wanted a uh, unfinished, unfinished pipe, so it's buffed out smooth it's got some um uh, boxwood burl on it which i really love with a dark dark accents that stuff mm -hmm. is just beautiful looks okay. like pearl and um excellent yeah that's uh that's really that's really about it okay well there's always something new going on at my house so uh the first thing uh my friend dean who works uh, at the Harnett County Sheriff's Office in Harnett County, North Carolina. Uh, we traded some tobacco. Um, the new H.H. Rustica. Oh, which, yeah. There you go. Yep. Mm -hmm. So uh, he sent me some tins of that, and I was very appreciative, and I sent him some tobacco. And he was uh, nice enough to include a Sheriff's Office patch, which will go up on oh, my beautiful. wall now that uh, I, I didn't want to put it up on the wall until I got the show off. Yeah. And then I, I meant to talk about this pipe last week. So Rich at Smith House Pipes, um, and I'm going to use the green screen uh, so that we can actually see the pipe. So there we go. It is a lovely little rusticated. 
Canadian slash billiard. And what this pipe did was help me understand why my grandfather absolutely loved small, light billiards. It clinches yeah. like a champ. Um, it looks fantastic. Um, and I, I want to apologize to the pipe makers that, that I buy pipes from. I do put rubber bits on mine. Um, and because I've had to restore stems that people have bit through, and I have a sharp tooth that would cut through every pipe stem I had. If I don't put them on, and I'm a clincher, when I put when I light my pipe, it stays in my mouth until the bowl's done. So it protects the pipes. I don't want to destroy your work. So Stefan Cashwell was on uh, the Pipes magazine with Brian Levine and said, it's one of the most disheartening things to me when somebody puts a rubber bit on my pipe. Don't be upset. We're just protecting your work. I, I, I'd hate to, you know, if I ever go to sell a pipe, um, I would feel terrible if I'd bitten a hole through it. So I put rubber yeah. bits on them. But this is from Rich at Smith House Pipes. It's an excellent pipe. Uh, and I absolutely love it. And there'll be more Smith Out Pipe in my collection. And then I got the final piece. Let's get the green screen back. And we'll put this up where you can see it. This oh, yeah. is nice. another ABB Brown uh, Bent Dublin. And it completed my set. It's got the horn accent. And now I have seven, a seven-day set of smooth Bent Dublins from uh, from Corey. And as a special treat, as you and I are both Catholic, um, he, he made this pipe that I saw that really needed to come home with me. So oh, nice. it came Look home. at that. Beautiful. Yeah, and of course, it's a smooth Dublin. So spectacular work. And then last but not least, I know this guy named Tim Beaumont. And uh, I had a pretty good weekend at the Columbus Pipe Show. Uh, so two pipes made it this way. And I, I've smoked both of them this weekend. They came in on Friday. And I'm going to put the green screen back up. And Calabash. Absolutely gorgeous. Love this pipe. It is the coolest, smoothest smoke that I've had. It is just fantastic looking. I love the accents, the black. It's a great clincher. It's very light, surprisingly, for being a Calabash. And it's absolutely fantastic. And then Tim made this pipe a while ago, and I have to stare at it because Tim and I trade pictures of stuff. And this is the horn, kind of bent Dublin. Absolutely spectacular pipe. It's, again, light, comfortable, smokes like a dream. If you don't have a Beaumont pipe in your collection, get one. Get one now. <laughs> well, I, thanks I have, for the, I have uh, several. Thanks for the plug. Shameless plug for Tim, um, but that's how you and I got our start together. I, I, I got a couple that's of pipes right. from you, and we just kind of, our friendship and, and all the things we've done kind of took off from there, and I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the pipes I got from you. So yeah. that's what's new in well, thank my you. world. Very kind. So, well, just okay. uh, a couple of comments. Uh, you know, Corey Brown and uh, uh, the Smith House pipes. Those are ones when I started making pipes a couple of years ago. Um, those were two of the ones, two of the makers that I looked at all the time and always thought, man, if I could just do that. And and um, and I still do that. There's there are aspects and elements of the the work that they put out that um, it just I'm envious. And um, so you got a couple of really nice pipes there. Yeah, and there'll be links below to all the main uh, the maker pipe makers that we talk about. And again, Tim and I are both aficionados of artisan pipes. We like artisan pipes. Tim makes artisan pipes. I enjoy smoking artisan pipes. So we'll talk about yep. them. Yep. All right. So, so let's talk about pipes. And there's a couple of questions that, as a follow up to the Columbus Pipe Show, the NS, the NAS. PC pipe show that I wanted to ask as you started to get commissions coming in. And I know that you, you had seven or eight commissions right off the bat come in from the show. Was there a specific size or style that people were looking for? Or was it just different accents? Tell me, was there a common theme in the commissions or was it all eight completely different pipes? Uh, the, the last, um, it's all across the board. Um, you know, I, I don't, um, as you know, I don't make the same pipe every time. Every, you know, they're all, they're all different. And, mm -hmm. um, 
you know, it looks kind of like a shotgun blaster. They go from one extreme to the, to the next. But um, uh, they're really, uh, uh, you know, across the board. Everything from, um, you know, eggs, uh, you know, with a bamboo shank and, you know, olive billiards. Um, you know what? Um, come to think of it, there are three olive billiards that um, uh, I've got requests for. So I guess if there is a common theme, that would be it. Um, and that came from the show, from the uh, uh, pipe event yesterday. It was, uh, okay. th there was a, <clears throat> I was, sh <clears throat> pardon me, showing this, this, uh, that's the giveaway pipe that for the newsletter this quarter. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and a couple of guys wanted to buy this specific pipe. And at the show, I had it sitting there with a sign in front of it, you know, fill out the card and, and uh, subscribe. <laughs> and be eligible for the drawing and um you know can't sell you that pipe but you know i'll make you i'll make you one and and three people said that they they wanted um one just like that but that's that's kind of an outlier um though the the commissions that came in um you know i've got one for a uh a, a, a ben egg with a uh um uh bamboo shank you know curly bamboo um i've got one uh a billiard with uh, dark bamboo uh shank um some plateau um a uh a tomato uh a, a lavat uh, you name it i mean it's just kind of all across the board um and you know to your uh the, the catholic theme one there there's a um uh father leonard from mystic connecticut we're working on a uh a marion piece um and it's going to have a uh depict both uh, sort of indicative of of uh, Mary and also um, uh, Christ. And so we were talking about that design today, and that should be a pretty interesting project. So there's just, it's really kind Ooh, of very, uh, very broad. Yeah. You, you need to make a video of that and make sure we get it up on your YouTube channel, because that yeah, would be would fascinating to me to see how you do it. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Now, where do you get, how do you, how do they grade bamboo and where do you get bamboo? Is this another eBay thing? Is there, how, how do you acquire about, bamboo I don't know about the, as a pipe the grades, maker? Jim. Yeah. I don't know about the grades, Jim. Okay. Um, uh, I've gone, I bought bamboo from uh, Steve at um, uh, Vermont, Vermont Freehand mm -hmm. um, and have had good luck there. And I bought it from uh, Premel at um, Raw Crafted. The best luck that I've had is the best method. It's not really luck, but the best method really is to go and actually pick it out. Okay. And that's really where I come up with the uh, the best. And it's all about yield. You know, how much mm -hmm. of that stick of bamboo can I use? And okay. um, so... Uh, and in terms of variety, it seems, you know, there may be more. And, I, you know, if there if there are more um, species of bamboo that uh, I'm missing here for, for pipe making purposes, feel free to comment. But there's a there's a straight sort of white and it may have some sort of bend in it, uh, a little bit of a curve, uh, but it's it's white and fairly clean. Um, uh, knuckles, um, and then the the dark, uh, sort of a chocolate colored bamboo, and then mm -hmm. there's a uh, uh, th there's one that's very gnarly and kind of cur curled. I don't know whether that curled part is just mm -hmm. a different part of the root. I don't know enough about bamboo. I just know what I've seen in a box and pick out and think, gee, that would be neat. Um, but that, okay. that really is kind of the three varieties that I have worked with and, and have found to be uh, very, uh, very useful. Okay. Now let me ask you this. Does bamboo enhance the pipe smoke in any way? Uh, Jay Furman, uh, you know, he posts every morning on Instagram and you see he, he's got quite the collection of bamboo pipes and, and seems to be in love with it. And I have one. Um, at, I'm not a bamboo guy, just my thing. Tell me what bamboo does that, is it just an aesthetics thing or, or is there something uh, physical, mechanical 
about the bamboo? I, I think I think the the bamboo kind of is a, is a uh, a style element it goes back to I think it's World War One. There wasn't um, guys were having their pipes break and and there mm-hmm. was nowhere to get briar so but they could they could use bamboo and so they were okay. rigging them together with that i'm not sure um i've never been able to really tell a difference um, okay uh when when i make a bamboo pipe um i insert a um, stainless steel tube through the bamboo and okay that's your your tenon to connect both the stummel and then the stem connection is with a stainless steel tube. Okay. Um, Joe Skoda brought up a point um, about the notion that, you know, the, the, the temperature of the, um, the cool temperature of the stainless steel and the warmth uh, from the, uh, from the bowl, the fire in the bowl would create, should create more condensation and you would have more gurgling, I suppose, with a um, bamboo shank. But I've not noticed that. Theoretically, I think that makes sense, but I, I have a couple of bamboos and I don't notice that to be any better or worse than any of my other pipes. So that's my two cents. Okay. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Any new material that's come in? I know you got a bunch of exotic woods last week when we chatted. Any other new woods pop in this week? Uh, I, you know, Dan uh, Reese gave me a stack of, of uh, uh, exotic woods um, yesterday. His neighbor does some woodworking and had a bunch of cutoffs. So uh, he gave me uh, a bunch of Purple Heart, some uh, Osage Orange, which I guess is an exotic, but uh, it's pretty it's it's pretty material mm-hmm. um, i think there was some pecan in there uh some black walnut that's not really exotic but it's good to have and it was pr- and it's pretty so i got uh you know having stuff like that uh, around you use such small bits of it um having having pieces that you can cut into uh usable um blanks is it really comes in handy i started nice. using also some of the material from um Carolina Cumberland, mm-hmm. man, that's really neat stuff. Um, it cuts Aaron, nice. Aaron makes a, Aaron makes a fantastic product. If you guys haven't seen Carolina Cumberland, he's on Instagram. He posts almost daily. He's on Facebook too. Absolutely, some gorgeous stuff coming out of there. It's uh, it's translucent. Um, I made a uh, I posted it on Instagram for the um, Instagram Pipe Makers Club. A yeah, uh, yeah. Th- for the month of August, the project was a paneled pipe. So I made a paneled Dublin, and um, I found a piece in the uh, the lot that I bought from him that was uh, very dark. Uh, I think it's it looks black to me, but it's got these real rich dark red swirls in it, mm-hmm. um, and uh, it, it's just really classy looking material. And I, and I paired that with Coco Bolo. And they really set one another off. So I'm just really enjoying working with that. And it's and it's translucent too, that the material. So when you trim it down, um, you know, you get it to a thickness where light will travel through it. It's really kind of cool. So yeah. kudos to him. That's some nice stuff. All right. Excellent, excellent. All right. Anything else on the pipe side? I think that's it. I think that's right. it. Yeah. All right. Um, let's talk about tobacco. So last week I talked about getting a big manual shredder and I had about 25 pounds of tobacco. I'm down to three pounds of tobacco that needs to be shred. It's amazing. <laughs> if you're blending at home and you're buying whole leaf products, spend the money and get the big electric shredder. I went through six pounds of it Friday night in about two and a half hours and I went through another 15, 16 pounds of it. I'm, I'm down to just uh, two pounds of rustica that I need to shred and uh, some Latakia. And Latakia really doesn't like to go through the shredder because it makes it um, powder. So that'll have to be hand cut. Uh, I did pick up a couple of new tobaccos. Uh, I got Maryland Burley 609, which has an interesting 
flavor to it. Uh, it has an interesting taste. I smoked a little bit out of a clay pipe, and and I, I see some uses for it. I also picked up some Kentucky Burley SL, uh, which has a really sharp reddish color, um, it, you know, almost like that burnt red kind of color. Really interesting. Again, smoked a little bit of it in a clay pipe. I see some uses for this, for that as well. And lastly, I picked up a cigar leaf called Picaroon, and this is something special. It is just something so unique and so different. I've got a couple of ideas for it, and I'm going to be working on uh, putting Picaroon in a blender tube because I'm really excited about it. Also, I tried a blend with the Honeyed Irish Whiskey, which I think is going to be spectacular. And in the war between Herradura, Herradura Anejo Tequila, and Coralito, the Herradura Honeyed Tequila is was far superior. So that will be coming up. Uh, those two, uh, Jay Furman uh, recommended that I call the blend BRB Irish and BRB uh, Anejo. Um, and... BRB would stand for Barroom Brawl. So uh, I'm going to come up with two blends for that and see where it goes. Uh, I did last week get to make KM Pipes, who is a pipe maker uh, from, believe it or not, Connecticut as well. Um, and he had called me up and said, I'm, I'm really interested in getting a blend. I want it to be something like this. I want I want to taste the multi uh, Virginias. Send him the sample off. He should get it Monday or Tuesday. And we'll see where it goes from there. Um and other than that, um, new tobacco, electric shredder makes my world just a better place. It, it was taking me two and a half to three hours to get through a pound and to get through 18 pounds this weekend was, was kind of special. So fun stuff. Hey, Jim, at the show, um, mm -hmm. one of the, a couple of the questions that we got again and again was about the tobaccos, um, mm -hmm. uh, and you're, you're really kind of answering the question, um, uh, talking about the, the shredder, but the, you know, the question that we got a lot was, you know, do you, are you taking, you know, raw whole leaf and, um, you know, what, what's the process for, for, uh, turning that into smokable tobacco. And then also, um, the question was, you know, do you source your, your, uh, all of your leaf domestically or do you, you know, do you have to go, uh, internationally to get, it? um, you know, just, just how do you do that? Okay. Uh, Cause I think that where they were going with the question was, is, you know, you buy in, um, stuff that somebody else is, uh, processed and then you're just mixing it together or are you starting from scratch and, and, uh, grinding your own leaf and, um, uh, you know, making all your tobacco blends from, from fresh. So if you can help us understand that, that'd be great. Okay. So the answer to that question is yes. And yes. Um, yes, I do get whole leaf. There are three suppliers that I get it from. I get it from whole leaf tobacco, total leaf supply and leaf only. Um, I, I don't get a ton of tobacco from leaf only. Um, simply because I, they're really slow. Um, Total Leaf and Whole Leaf typically get their orders out the next day, and I can get them in four or five days. Whole Leaf or Leaf only has a three to five day. We've got to pack your order up and then ship it to you. So it's usually about two weeks to get it because it's East Coast and has to come all the way to Colorado. There are some blenders I buy from pipes and cigars, smoking pipes tobacco pipes simply because there are Virginias that I can't get anyplace else. Um, I, I do like C and D's dark burly. It, it just, the process that they use, which they don't share, or I would try to do it at home. Isn't available to me. Um, stoved red Virginia and Cavendish. Um, again, I wear the golden band of happiness uh, and making Cavendish at home. is just not something that I'm going to get to do. So, there are some things that I do by commercially. Uh, a lot of the things that I do are from Whole Leaf. I, I'm not, I, I really don't, it, it just depends on the blue, uh, the, 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 the flavor profile that I'm trying to achieve. Um, there is one Virginia that I absolutely love. It's from Sutliff. It's 515 RC1. And it's matured Virginia where they have put, 
I don't know if it's apple vinegar or some type of vinegar on it, but it gives it a very ketchupy, mature Virginia flavor to it, and it enhances certain blends. So there are some things that I buy commercially that I mix up, and there are a lot of blends that I make that are whole leaf only. So it just depends on, on again, the flavor profile I'm trying to achieve. And, and that I hope that answers the question. I think it would be interesting sometime to uh, dedicate a podcast uh, section to a particular uh, leaf variety, and especially ones that are particularly um, unique or, or difficult in the way that you have to process them to, to uh, uh, include them in a blend. We can certainly do that. Uh, yeah. I have done some blending videos on my YouTube channel, which is Emerson Southern Forged. Um, you don't really get to see the processing of the leaf because it's not particularly interesting. Um, watching me hand grind leaves before and now dropping them into the shredder really isn't all what I would consider to be thrilling watching. Um, Maybe if you yeah. wear a necktie while you're shredding. Ooh, very exciting. The the possibility of the necktie going into the shredder, that would be spectacular. That could be that could uh, be good. The hardest leaf to process for me is Latakia. I do like the flavor from Holy Leaf Latakia. I, I do buy uh, Latakia from Pipes and Cigars. It just depends on the blend. Because some of the blends I don't want to change from what I started with. So some of the blends that I started with, I was buying Latakia. And I there is a difference between whole leaf Latakia and Latakia you buy commercially. So some of the newer blends have whole leaf Latakia in it. Some of the older blends have purchased Latakia in it. And I don't want to make the change uh, simply because people that like those blends and that have been faithful, I, I try to stay original to what I started with. So mm -hmm. there you go. Great. And right. uh, oh, lastly, I did keep, pick up an orange leaf Virginia and shredded up a couple of pounds of it. And it has a very unique tin note to it. I haven't got to smoke it yet, but that's next on my list to to give it a try in a clay pipe just to see what it tastes like independently. And I have some ideas for blends for it as well. Um, Cornell and Deal just brought out their was it sun bear sun mountain and it has some orange virginias in it and i thought okay well i can get some orange virginias and and see what what it is and a lot of blenders you can't get anyplace else so all the orientals that i use are from whole leaf because you can't get bosma krumagrad or uh, samson in a a, a prepackaged from any of the major houses so and I, I like whole leaf Ishmael as well. But I will tell you that shredding both of those, all of those types of the oriental leaves, they come in very, very dry. So you do have to rehydrate them um, yeah. or it just makes powder. So there we go. Hope that answers the question that the pipe show folks had. Thank you. All right. Excellent. Well, Last up on the podcast, as always, and we've got some great questions from the audience. So ask us anything. So let's get to those and I'll, I'll let you talk and then I'll talk and we'll see where it goes from there. Uh, the first great. question is from Instagram from Dude Rustica. When lighting or relighting your pipe, should you put the flame to the tobacco or keep it off and let the heat do its job? Or does that even matter? Um, you know, I guess I, I, I pull the flame down into it, into the tobacco. Is that, I don't know if I'm answering his question. Okay. So, so you, you I know, think what take... he's saying, so we're going to do a demonstration. So you've got your pipe. Mm -hmm. Let me put it up here. Do you just hold it over the tobacco like this and draw air down through it and let it go to work? Or do you point it into the bowl and... Now, hold on a oh, second. I go My ceiling. Yep. First drop one. it into the bowl like that and let it go. Yeah. The first, first one? one for me. Okay. Yep. Good. So do drastica so that you know, both of us are on the same, on the same wavelength on this. We both drag it about, uh, across the top and, uh, mutton chop piper actually did a whole video on how to light your pipe. Um, and you just 
when you're first lighting it, it's short, quick puffs uh, to, to get an even coat across it. And then as you're relighting, just one long, good drag will get you back to where you want to be. There you go. All right. But there we go. Next question. This one is from Colorado Piper Girl. When smoking flaked tobacco, how do you prepare it so you don't have to relight it a hundred times and overheat your bowl and tobacco? I I guess um, I tend to like to rub it out, um, you know, to get it to get it all consistent, and then mm -hmm. um, yeah, I and and uh, and then you know. Then there's really no difference for me anyway in how I how I go about the the process of of lighting it. Okay. You? Well, Colorado Piper Girl, because I'm here in Colorado with you, uh, I would recommend rubbing it out and letting it sit. Uh, so I've got some of the new H H Rustica from MacBaron, and it's moist. And the first bowl I had, I rubbed it out and let it sit for 45 minutes to, to, to dry it out a little bit. It just depends on the moisture content of the flake. But both of us agree that you should rub it out. Um, there's a, actually a video from Pear George from Mac Marin about how to smoke a flake. And I did that with Bold Kentucky. And I didn't like it at all. Um, it made the blend almost too strong. It was just... An uncomfortable smoke is the, the nicest thing I can say about that. I'm not much for folding it. And I would rub it out. And again, because here in Colorado, especially at higher elevations, like I said, here in Parker at 6,000 feet, less oxygen, more relights. You really have to watch your cadence so you don't overheat the bowl. And a little drier tobacco would help that out immensely. So rub it out, 45 minutes here in Colorado. Colorado Piper Girl. And also, Colorado Piper Girl, if you're listening or watching, I will be at Edwards uh, Pipe and Tobacco Shop in Inglewood Saturday morning. I'm meeting with Anthony from Castle Briars, and we're going to have a pipe and chat and do all the things you do when you have a pipe. So there you go. Next question, Joel Russo. Joel asked, any techniques for smoking down to the bottom of the bowl? I tend to get... Uh, I tend to often get too hot of a pipe at that point. It's just a little warm at the end of the bowl for him. So I'll let Tim answer, and then I've got a, a whole bunch of stuff to talk about. Yeah, truth be told, I almost never smoke all the way down to the bottom. Um, there's always a little bit that I end up dumping out. Um, I have to, I have to work too hard to uh keep that going get it too hot and it, usually by then it it really is it's not appealing to me anymore the 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 top and you know the, the top two-thirds is the most enjoyable for me and i can tell by the taste that i'm getting down to the bottom and then i'll just let it go out and i'll dump it okay it's a now, taste, do you find it gets a little bit me. more do you find that it gets a little more bitter at the end of the bowl that's why I don't. That's why I don't um, go any further than maybe the top two thirds because of the bitterness. Okay. Excellent. I have a solution for you. If you're a, a fan of pipe spores and pals, last week they talked about uh, Nording Keystones, and they also tried it with brown rice. So, Nording Keystones, the, a bag this size. Uh, is nine ninety nine from a couple of different places, and you put four or five of these little stones, and I've got got them in a jar here, and you drop four or five of these stones in the bottom of the pipe, and you can smoke all the way down to the bottom. It, there's no moisture, and, and I, as I've said before, I'm a clincher. Pipe goes into my mouth; it doesn't come out until I'm done, um, and, and I do get dottle at the end. Uh, the bottom of the bowl tastes terrible to me. And when I got these on Thursday of this week and put it in, I've had about six pipes since. No dottle. It's a fantastic way to smoke. Now, there's also another alternative. And there are these little Altine Mersham bowl filters. And I'll hold it up so you can see. And you can get these at Tobacco Pipes. is the only place I found them 
at this particular moment, and they're uh, currently twenty dollars. And these you drop in. You can see the you drop these into the bottom of the bowl, and they're mersham. And mersham is naturally absorbent, uh, and it's got airways on four sides and, and an airway in the middle, and it will keep the bottom of the pipe dry. And why nobody talks about these things is baffling to me because there are, I think, a lot more people out there that do not smoke the bottom third of the bowl because they get the same things that we get, where it's just bitter, it doesn't taste good. It's really weird because you look at some of the pipes that I haven't had for a year or two, and it, you can see this is where Jim smoked to, and the bottom of the, the bowl is perfectly clean. And that's because I don't like the bottom of the bowl. And this has really changed how I think about it. And like I said, Justin and Nate were, specifically Nate, was just raving about it. Like, oh, you have to have this. You have to be using this. It it completely changes the way you feel about getting to smoke the whole bowl. And I'm very excited about where it's going. And I've got uh, two bags of it here, and I use it every day. So, so I hope Jim, that answers those, your uh, question, Joel. So those those uh, the little stones, you uh, mm -hmm. just toss, you, you dump them out with the uh, at the end of the bowl. Yep. Yep. It, so what, put, what do you think they and are? Is it um, it feels like sandstone um mm -hmm. it looks like sandstone but i'm not i'm not sure um but i think they're uh they're very light so i i don't think that they're granite or you know basalt or something ridiculously heavy i think that they're sandstone if i had to guess that's a great solution so it is, and I would highly recommend those. And kudos to Nate for pointing that out. And uh, I tried it, and it works like a champ. And I highly recommend, Joel, if you, you can't stand getting to the bottom of the bowl, this is for you. Either one of those two products will work great. Um, the alternate, a little bit more expensive, and you have to be a little bit more careful. You can't, you know, give your pipe a good tap and have it come out because Mersham really doesn't like uh, sudden stops. So... All right, from, from from our mutual friend, Terry Brewster on Facebook, your favorite drink to pair with vapors, which is Virginia for Perique blends, for those of you watching and not understanding. Um, I think um, just a, uh, I think a, a, a rye, um, Either a rye or a bourbon, but neat. Okay. Yeah. I am in agreement with Tim. Uh, I like this Red Breast Irish whiskey I've gotten. Uh, I think it's spectacular, and I think it would pair well with a vapor. I also think that a good scotch, a Highland scotch, which is not the PD, tastes like dirt scotch, um, the, the more flavorful of the scotches, in my opinion, I think both of those would go pair well with a vapor. Yeah. You know, and, and not overwhelm the taste. Um, so, yeah. there you go. Good, good pairing compliment. Yep. Yep. Yep, yep. All right. Next up, Kane Addison. And Kane uh, has had a couple of custom blends for me. In fact, he was the inspiration behind Acadia Par Parish and Vermilion Peak, which both have a bitters topping on it, which is why they're in the Mile High Blend series. And they've got unique, interesting flavors. One's vapor, one's, one's type of burly blend. Uh, Vermilion Peak is the burly. And he also uh, requested Jack Silver Lake, which uh, was a tribute blend that had cigar leaf for his cousin Jack, who passed away for his dad. Uh, Jack was a pipe smoker. His dad wasn't. Dad was a cigar smoker. So he asked for something special, and that's how I know Kane. In your opinion, how much does pipe shape affect the tasting experience? I don't know that uh, pipe shape uh, affects it as much as um, the material and the way you smoke. So, for example, you know, the three materials that you're generally going to find are going to be briar, olive, or uh, morta. And, um, you know, briars, the most dense out of the three, um, uh, olive is 
in the middle and um, Morta is th the least dense. So Morta is going to be a little bit, it's going to be a drier smoke. Um, olive is going to impart uh, an all, you know, it's, it's an oily wood, so you're, it's going to impart some flavor. I, I find it kind of pleasing. Some people don't like it at the beginning. Um, as you begin to cake it up, uh, the, the inside of the, the chamber, that tends to go away. And um, what flavors are imparted generally are going to be from the, the smoke that you had before. Briar's the, the, uh, the most dense out of the three. Um, that will can impart some, some sour taste. Some folks like to have um, bowl coating uh, on, a, on a brand new uh, pipe and uh, whenever I do it I use a combination of activated charcoal make a paste out of that and um, organic sour cream and the sour cream is just a binder and you, you wipe it around on the inside of there and it and it, and it just creates a, a barrier between your first smoke and, and any sourness that you might get from from the briar um, you know the, the way that uh, briar is processed um, those blocks are cut, they're rough cut, and then um, they're boiled. I don't know how long they boil them, but they have to boil the tannins out of them. And then those blocks come out of the, uh, uh, the, the, the hot water uh, boiling bath, and then they have to be dried for uh, slowly for a long time, months and months. Might be a year. Um, and... Uh, and they, it, again, it's got to, something has to happen slowly so it doesn't, they don't crack. But the point in saying all that is that they're, uh, briars full of tannins and, and dependent upon, you know, to what extent the tannins were boiled out, you might end up with, if you've got a bit of a redder pipe, redder in color, you've got more tannins in there. You might get some of that flavor. So it's more the material, uh, than it's going to be the shape in my opinion. Okay. Excellent. Here's my take. I don't think the shape of the pipe matters nearly as much as width of the bowl and depth of the bowl. When I'm testing a new tobacco or I'm, I've got a new blend in my hands, I like to smoke it in six very specific different pipes because there are differences in the way the bowl size and depth. So a, a wider bowl gives you a different flavor profile than a, a narrower bowl. And a narrow tall bowl, which I prefer for Virginias and Vapors, like the Dublin from Corey that I just showed you, uh, I think that they smoke those incredibly well. It's just a personal preference. When I'm smoking an English blend or a Balkan blend or a Burley blend, I think a wider bowl gives you a different flavor profile and, and enhances it a little bit. The shape of the pipe, I really don't think matters as much as, as width and depth. And it, I have a Mersham pipe that I use to test blends in. I, I, I like Mersham pipes as well. I don't have any Morta simply because I'm, I, I have a stigma about Morta and I don't really want to talk about it on air. Um, and I, I've got a couple of Hollywood pipes and I absolutely love them. In fact, I have one from Tim and I have one from Richard at EP Pipes. And I think olive wood smokes fantastically and I really like it. And I have a cherry wood pipe. In fact, my KM pipes is a 30 year old cherry block and it smokes like a champ. And I, I, I would like to try some of the other woods that are out there just to see if it imparts a different flavor, uh, specifically cherry and black walnut, uh, to see what they do with how they respond to a blend. But I don't think pipe shape changes much. So Tim and I kind of agree on that as well. And the last question of the night comes from New Jersey Piper, and he asked, what should I have for dinner? Hard-hitting informative well that's us as you know it's got to be beef it's what's for dinner oh man yeah. you're, you're not a vegan tim 
Um, I think vegans are delicious, actually. <laughs> I like to think that I'm doing my part to keep vegans' food safe by eating the beef. <laughs> they, can, they can have I mine. Would strong, <laughs> I would strongly recommend New Jersey Piper that uh, a New York strip is an excellent choice uh, on, uh, on a grill, flame broiled. Uh, just to the right temperature. It should never be well done. Uh, people that like well done steak have, have issues that perhaps counseling can cure, but it should be medium rare to rare. Uh, that's the way you have beef. A baked potato, nothing better, perhaps nothing corn better in the cabin. Nothing better than mm -hmm. a New York strip on the grill. No, no. Nice in fact, that's what, yeah. So tasty and juicy. It It has to be beef. Both Jim and I agree, uh, a New York strip cooked over open flame, it doesn't get much better than that. In New Jersey Piper, if you, uh, there, there is a, uh, an organization out there, um, the, the, uh, the initials are PETA, and uh, it, it, it stands for People Eating Tasty Animals. <laughs> uh, Jim and I are two members, and... Uh, we're looking for more members. Card carrying. We, <laughs> we make donations to them every year. I, I, I don't think that I could live being a vegan. I, I, uh, I, I think there's some rule. You become a vegan, you have to do CrossFit, and you spend your entire life telling other people about being vegan and doing CrossFit. So I'm going to have to pass on the veganism. I do like to have a vegetable every now and then. I, I love green beans. And we have our, our Sunday dinner is pretty much the same every week. New York strip, green beans, baked potato, and corn on the cob in season. And that is Sunday dinner for us. And it works. Beautiful. Meat. The other thing that... Um, it's what for dinner. Yeah. And, and, and you know, don't discount um, uh, the pig. Because um, you, you take a, a rack of ribs and uh, smother it in... Um, you know, all sorts of uh, tomatoey processed, uh, sugar filled, um, you know, uh, condiment and wrap it in foil and put it on the smoker. And um, three or four hours later, you got yourself heaven. Meat candy. Magic. magic. Simply magic. And if you don't have a smoker at home, get yourself a, a crock pot and you can slow cook it in the crock pot so the meat falls just could fall right off the bone and then put your favorite barbecue sauce on it, whatever that may be. There are a lot of them that I like. I'm, I'm not the only ones I don't like. And this is going to sound strange from a guy from Carolina. Vinegar is not a condiment. It is a preservative. Do not put vinegar on things. It's vinegar barbecue sauce. It, and I'm sorry, it's God awful. Stop. That's it. terrible. Yeah. yeah, brown sugar, molasses, honey, wonderful. Yeah. Vinegar, no, no, no. Yeah. Cook them in the crock pot, take them out. You can bake the the your topping of choice on it, or you can take it out to the grill, toss it on the grill on a low heat, and cook it for a few minutes so it caramelizes right to it. Highly recommend it. Pork, the other white meat. Oh, man, great. And some yeah. people go for chicken, but chicken is just it's a weak bird. You know, you do it as a, as a, uh, as a stand in, but, um, give me something that was on four legs. Yeah. 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 I, I, I do eat yard bird. Um, it's, it's okay. It's, it needs decoration. I mean, chicken is not the most flavorful of things. I, I've never, I've had many steaks that haven't had anything on it that I thought it tasted great. I've never had a chicken breast and said, boy, this is delicious plain. <laughs> <laughs> when's my sentence over <laughs> <laughs> thank you sir may i have another uh I, if you're going to make chicken if if chicken's on the menu i highly recommend red peppers jalapenos red onion a, a little red sauce wrap it up on a taco shell spectacular slice it up it's perfect there you go but other than that you know it's it's what you feed the dog that's Dogs true. like chicken. <laughs> I got four pounds of chicken breast. The dogs are going to love it. <laughs> hey, dogs are. And if you go to, 
Yeah. And if you go to Costco, you can buy it in the, you know, the economy package. I think it's 22 pounds uh, because that's the size you need when you get to Costco. The, the amazing thing to me is, you know, like uh, Costco or Sam's Club, the fist fights that break out when that guy takes the chickens out of the rotisserie. Oh. Are you kidding me? Uh, so here in Parker, Colorado, there are lots of people that go to Costco and everything is organic, which is hilarious to me. I had to buy organic ketchup. It's ketchup. It's <laughs> sugar water that a tomato graced its presence to join. It's, right. it's just, it's ketchup. It doesn't have to be organic ketchup. I, uh, uh, are these non-GMO tomatoes? I know. Uh, every vegetable that's in the store was genetically modified. I'm sorry, they're all genetically modified. Because if you saw what they were originally, no one would eat them. Have you seen corn that they, they, they had like 500-year-old seeds from? And it looks like a toothless homeless guy's mouth. There's like, oh, here's a kernel, and here's a kernel. Yeah, no. <laughs> every food that's out there has been genetically modified. So stop it. And organic... It, yeah, that's like, oh, yeah, I want to get the organic Skittles. Do you, do you have those, you know, that are made with? It's right. ridiculous. Or, or you but know, the, the when, people that go to whole paycheck, you know, and spend, you know, take a home <laughs> equity loan out to buy groceries for the week because it's all organic. Give me a break. Yeah, I can buy eggs this week because my loan came through. Yeah, <laughs> but I, Costco's a busy place. Costco's a busy place here in Parker, Colorado. And when the chickens come out of the rotisserie, it oh, it's fight night. Let's get ready to rumble. We've got twelve chickens coming out and twenty eight people that want them. <laughs> Cracked me up the other day. I went into the grocery store to buy a jar of mayonnaise, and and uh, I was pleased to find out that Hellman's mayonnaise is now made with cage free eggs. Thank God. I mean. <laughs> You kidding me? <laughs> Free range mayonnaise, excellent, <laughs> excellent. That's spectacular. Uh, uh, See, you know, it was an extra dollar yeah. forty five. I think you know. Oh, spectacular! Hey, you know, there's a price for a clear conscience, I guess. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, uh, yeah. No. No. Uh, nah. No, nah. all right. On to the next thing, um, yeah. but uh, yeah, we're <laughs> you and I are both on the same page. And here in Colorado, and I, I'm sure it's a West Coast thing. There is a supermarket called King Super S O O P E R, and I believe it's under the Kroger flagship. And I refuse to shop there just because the name is so stupid. I don't want to have a receipt in my pocket that says King Super. They might be the best grocery store here. I'm not shopping at it because it's a stupid name. It's it's and they S -T -O -O -P -I -D. probably have O O P I D. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And and they have these god awful radio commercials uh, that are breathtakingly bad. One of these days, I want to sit in a meeting when a, when a group of executives and a marketing firm that, that's doing their ads comes in and says, here's a great idea. Like, whoever the guy that's doing Limu, Emu, and yeah. Doug or Dave, whatever it is, if I see one more ad on YouTube with those two clowns in it, I, I, how did they approve this? What was the thought process? I would be sitting there going, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. How can you possibly want this to represent our brand? Because it's catchy and people remember it. Yeah, because it's effing stupid. But you, well, you remember it, but you don't remember what they're selling. Like, I don't know what, I, I've seen it, but, and it's terrible. I just want it to be over, but I don't know what they're selling. <laughs> good That's point. a win. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, they're the ones that do the Limo Emo commercials. Oh, good. I'm not buying that product no, at all. No way. No, no way. No. No. All right. Well, that's what's going on. So, again, I will be at Edwards Pipe Shop Saturday morning, 10 a.m. If anybody wants to come and have pipe with me, I'll, I'll have a couple of samples. Reach out to me on Instagram. You can email me at Emerson Southern at yahoo.com. You can reach Tim at www. Oh, wait a minute. No, my email address. Reach me at my email address, pbhbpipes 
at gmail.com. PBHB pipes at gmail.com. You can also reach me on my website, www.pbhbp.com. There you go. And there you can go. connect with both of us on Instagram if you haven't. I am also on Facebook at Emerson Southern. And I will tell you if you leave a message for me on Facebook, sometimes it takes me a while to get back because I don't go on very often. Is what it yeah. is. I think I have a Facebook connection too, but I never go on it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us for episode three. It's been a blast. Next week, we will have hard hitting questions like what's our favorite toilet paper or perhaps what's our favorite color. In the meantime, smoke what you like and don't let anybody tell you different. Thank you very much and have a great rest of your week. Bye now. <laughs>